Oh, gosh. Count it in, bro. Let's go. And we're live in five, four. <laughs> Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Burlingame, here with my co-host, Paul Glass. And today, we're talking about the boring stuff. <laughs> It's not. It's not the boring stuff. The important stuff that you need, the necessities for landing gosh dang fish on, I don't know, like a very high percentage of the lures you're really going to use. So when you move away from, you know, that fancy whopper plopper and that swim bait and, you know, that sexy spinner bait, what do you end not up with? Bait. Not the swim Well, it depends on. We're, we're talking like those fancy, you know, chase blade bait. $50. Plus swim baits, you know, the, the mega baits. No, what do you get to? You get to your plastics, your hooks, your sinkers, your weights, like all that stuff. So we're talking finesse. the finesse too. Gotta love the finesse. We're going to show some love for finesse today. But we're talking about the terminal box. We're talking about your tackle setup. You're going to have your square bills, your crank bills, or your crank bills. <laughs> your square square baits, your, your crank bills. <laughs> I'm going to cut that. Anyways, you're going to have your square yeah, bills. your top frogs and your bottom frogs. And your... <laughs> <laughs> what are the bottom frogs? <laughs> Actually, chase baits. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a bottom frog. It's <laughs> a medium frog. It's a sinking slowly frog. Anyways, you're going to have all sorts of other lures and baits in your different sexy Plano edge tackle boxes, probably. Or your Busby, right? Oh, uh, your Busby box. And your options, too. Then you should probably have a terminal box. So today, we're going to talk about what the heck should be in that box, what makes it different from the other boxes that you guys carry, and how you can use it to land way more fish than all your friends who think they're super cool and special. Before we get to that, if you guys like the content, if you want to listen to more episodes, be sure to subscribe to the Burley Fishing Podcast on any place, in any place that you find podcasts. Uh, drop us a review, five stars, please, and throw us some comments. Let us know what you would like to hear about next, future topics, let us know what we can do to improve this show. We always appreciate any feedback you guys can give us. And then follow us everywhere at Burley Fishing, Instagram, Facebook, at Paul underscore J underscore Glass on Instagram. Yeah, that was like my... I got to shorten that. <laughs> the, this guy. I'm just going to make it this guy. This guy, at this guy on Instagram. And then Burley Fishing on YouTube. You're going to want to follow us on YouTube this month. By the way, we are opening a whole bunch of subscription boxes. We got Six Sense, Mystery Tackle Box, Monster Bass, Post Fly. I have a fly fishing box in there for you guys just to freak you out. And then at the end of the month, we're going to compare them all together and determine the best box, the hashtag better box for the month. And guess what? I'm going to give you guys half the baits I got out of these boxes. So you're going to get eight baits and a Plano waterproof 3600 box so you can stuff them in there and then you're going to get a couple bags we'll say look i'm just gonna say it right here three bags of plastics i'm just gonna rip them off the wall there they're all full still or i'll throw you some from the boxes this month no one thinks jeff's being generous this is called spring cleaning it just happens to be summer but <laughs> jeff is just cleaning shit out, of, I get his, rid of, out of his office his no, wife was like you. this is not cool you <laughs> get some of this crap so out of here <laughs> I, I am going to give you guys the new stuff from the boxes that I get this month. So you are getting new stuff, rest assured, and I will be sending that to one lucky winner. What you got to do to win that, by the way, is you just got to watch the video we put out at the end of the month. I need you to help me to get that to 1,000 likes, and then you drop a comment, hashtag Burley Fishing, and you have an opportunity to win. I'm just going to do a random comment generator, pick somebody, and throw them a freaking bunch of tackle. You're going to be competing against my backup accounts. So I hope you have a lot of entries in there because you're going to need them. <laughs> Paul has 57. This guy. Account. This guy won. This guy, too. <laughs> this like, guy, 37, is the winner. <laughs> draw again. Draw again. Draw again. <laughs> All right, guys. Paul's not allowed to win. Everybody but knows actually, that. But actually... This guy, 88, is like, ah, dang it. <laughs> Why did I choose this name? <laughs> Terrible. All right, anyways, that's enough plugs. Let's get to the show. All right, what well, you got? We're working on the show. So, first of all, as always, question of the week. This one's pretty easy. So, this or that style of question. <laughs> that. Well, we're done here. <laughs> Next question. <No. laughs> Which one is more frustrating to you? I The reason this question exists is because... I had this happen to me for about six hours. 
to eight. Uh, it's probably four hours worth. Which one is more frustrating to you? Wasting a couple of hours on the first spot you went to because it looked juicy and you're like <laughs> 50 yards from the dock. Oh, and, and you catch nothing and you just waste time there. Uh, or you waste an equivalent amount of time just tying on, taking off, tying back on, untying, <laughs> retying rigs that you maybe cast a couple of times that you have zero faith in and you never catch anything on any of those when you should have just gone with what you started with. <laughs> Which one of those scenarios is more frustrating to you? I, I feel like one is frustrating in the moment and one is frustrating after the moment has passed. You know, it's like when you end up fishing the spot right off the boat launch and you're just like, this will work. And then it doesn't. And you're like, time check. Oh, God, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that is frustrating at that moment. But during that time, it's just like you get there, you're excited, you're pumped up. You're like, cast, cast, cast. Let's get them out there and let's just try and reel something in. And you're still like. You, you got that energy. I think... But from, then the sun's going down, and you're like, yeah, I have moved seven inches. You don't realize it until that the end of that moment. So I would actually say, I'm going to go that, not this, but that. And my that would be the, the tying, retying. I think that's so frustrating when you're throwing the kitchen sink. And, I mean, listeners, <laughs> of the two of us, I'm the worst at this. Uh, I... Always, we we pull off, right? And I drag my boat up and we look into my boat and on the inside of my boat, there are about 150 baits because I've literally at one point just said like, I'll tie one on. I won't even cast it. <laughs> I'm just like, nope, snip it off. <laughs> it's happened. Uh, or I'll cast it a few times. And I'm like, man, it's just not feeling right. It doesn't look very good in the water here or whatever. Like I'm an overthinker. So for me, it's going to be the tying, retying, trying and losing uh, that frustrates me to no end. It's like when you figure them out, you know, that just euphoric feeling you get, it's the complete inverse of that when you're just tying and retying. And it's so, I'm just crestfallen every time and I just fall to pieces. <laughs> I, I would agree with that. That has got to be, I think that's worse only because as long as it's not like the whole day. And I'll tell you why to me, it's more frustrating. The second scenario of tying and retying mm -hmm. What's very frustrating, there, it's like a ramp up, a slow ramp up, because you'll be like, oh, I'm going to try crankbait, and you fish crankbait like three times, and you're like, this is stupid, I keep getting hung up, and then <laughs> this is not the, you know, it's, it's either not the right depth, or it's just not going to work, yeah. and you're like, I'll go, you know, Carolina, and then you try to Carolina, you're like, why would this work here, you dummy, <laughs> and you, you, you're like, not only you're wasting plastics, <laughs> which is frustrating, but you go through this, it starts at like two or three, and then it ends up at like nine what the the flash that goes through my head is either is one of two things it's either this is the only saturday of this week and i only get like one day you know <laughs> or two a week to go fishing and like i am setting it on fire or what's worse is if i've taken a day off and i'm like i only get a couple of days off a year to go fishing and i yeah. am pooping all over this one by being indecisive stupid <laughs> or indecisive indecisive and stupid and so like yeah knowing that i'm just like taking my hard-earned time off and just throwing it away that actually is what like that is the uh that's the salt in the wound for that one because that just oh that sets me off i just get oh, very frustrated a hundred percent and I, I would say for our parents out there moms and dads like isn't it so frustrating this exact scenario where you burn that time, you're not catching the fish, you haven't, you just can't figure them out. You've been out there for four, five, six, eight hours, and you're just if like, if you're lucky, I, I could have been spending that time with my family, and also my significant other is probably pissed. That's, that's the one is you like. This is a whole topic. Like, I would actually like to do a whole episode on this. Doghouse for nothing. The doghouse for nothing episode. You know. You know when you get home, there's like if you're gone for a half a day or a full day, you know there is no chance Fire. that you get home. And what? That's not true. That that's not actually fair. But like, you a know you're you know you're like adding some sort of burden to your significant other or whoever is watching your child. Um, that while it's great hanging out with them, uh, it's a lot of work, and you are you are 
doing the most fun thing that you like to do, and they are, while doing a phenomenal thing that they like to do, Working. they're also feeding that thing that they like to hang out with and cleaning up its poop and making sure it doesn't swallow any fireworks and all the other <laughs> things that go along with being and They try hard, man. They do. Oh, man. They've got like a 12th sense that's like, oh, is there something really dangerous in here? Want that. They just zoom Dude. past every toy and they're like, I'll take the switchblade. That'd be cool. My four-year-old was eating lunch today and she decided it was a great time to start gasping for air as she had food in her mouth. She thought it was hilarious. She was at just mouthful of food and she'd be like, <gasps> and I'd be like, oh my God. I was like, please stop what you're doing. Don't you laugh do about it now. but Oh my God. Yeah. So I will, I will go with the second scenario too. Although looking back on the day though, uh, when you hit the good spot and you're like, I could have been here two hours ago, but instead I was stuck at that log jam 15 feet from where I launched. <laughs> that that will I mean that will come, it comes call. back in a wave, man. At once you're like son of a. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that's probably back and forth, and it's it's going to be like a 60 40 split, you yes. know. But yeah, they both suck. To be fair, <laughs> not ideal. All right, weekly check in. Oh what boy, have you what have you been doing this week? I've been working my ass off. <laughs> I've been, I, I'm doing like, so I do, I do uh, calls with gym owners a, as a mentor and I have done probably 60% of like my client base for a month in this week. And it's a Thursday people <laughs> because I'm going on vacation next week, which will be good. I'm going to fish all week long because we're right on the water. I'll actually have my Hobie this time for the first time on this lake. And I've had my, I had my hope. I owned my Hobie when we came to this lake last time. It's a cool little campground on an awesome little lake. That's like a private lake. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And there's some big ones in there. I've actually snapped an Abu Garcia Ike rod into three pieces on a gosh dang three and a half pounder. Like walk again for sometimes. Piece yeah. Wood. I thought it was a log and I'm fighting this thing over the boat. I was on a sit inside kayak and like, it's hard to get leverage sit inside when you're fighting a bigger fish and it didn't work out for my rod, but I hand lined them in. So this has become like one of my favorite lakes of all time, even though it broke a $150 rod, but don't worry. Cabela's next for giving me my money back. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's when I got the silver rod, bro. But, uh, uh bra. Bra. Uh, so I'm going camping this week. It's going to be great. This week, I'm basically working all week, and I've also been punching out freaking videos. I've done three unboxings this week, and they're, they're to be posted for future weeks, which all part of giveaway. You should probably watch them. Uh, <laughs> so go to Barley Fishing YouTube. Uh, and then I did some kayak videos, too. I did a full walkthrough of the fishing setup. So, like, the us-on-the-water version of the boat, basically. It's all rigged. That video should drop next Monday, on the YouTube channel. So check that out. If you want to see what we, well, what we, we have a lot of similar things, uh, but what I specifically have on my boat. And then I'm sure Paul do one later, probably feature that later. I don't know. Um, but other than, have I fished this week? Did I fish this weekend? I don't remember. When was this weekend? <laughs> what that happened? That is a good question, actually. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh yeah, no. All right. So I hit the river. And I was actually, I hit, uh, you know, a different section than we normally hit. Um, and on a, on a big, important river in Michigan, I won't tell you which one. I wouldn't want to give it away. <laughs> also, Matt. Uh, but anyway, so I the hit principle the principle of it. You got to drill it into your head so that when you actually get a spot you need to protect, you don't just be like, oh, and the, well, I won't say the section. It's kind of one of the biggest rivers, if not the biggest that we have. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so I was on said river at said section and I was testing out my anchor wizard setup with the drag anchor and it went really well. I was really happy with it. There's like one thing you and I got to figure out, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but went up river, got three nice smallies on the whopper plopper, which is like one of my favorite ways to catch smallies. So fun. Uh, so in the river is. So yeah. much better than on a lake. Oh, for sure. So much more of a fun fight. That was, <laughs> it was within spitting distance of the boat launch. So to our previous point, this one actually worked out for me. <laughs> I'm not saying it won't. 
my my all time best is still my at my front at the putout. Oh yeah, for sure. So hit a few like right at the beginning. I paddled upstream like forever, but this was just like it's been a heat wave in the Midwest, which is not normal for us. Tropical we, heat wave. We we are not ready for this. So it was like 95 that day. Humidity has been close to 100%. It's been absolutely insane. So I'm I'm like pedaling up river in that Hobie in current in one of our heavier current rivers of the area, and I'm just getting destroyed like pouring sweat i've never sweat this much in my life i i have owned a crossfit gym for five years i have worked out heavily just a, just a wrestler like I, yeah i wrestled like i've never sweat this much in my dang life it was absurd my monster bass hot hat was like just uh -huh. like, the hot my hot was trashed the, the hot was trashed <laughs> it was just so soaked Anyways, and then I tested out the square bills that we were checking out for Wow Factor Fishing, and they're pretty durable, but I broke one because I was, like, hitting it off rocks. I was like, check out how durable this thing is, and the bill snapped. <laughs> oh. Obviously. So now it's a uh, it's a floating bait. Um, <laughs> top water. Top, top water. Full top um, water. End of the day, I only landed four fish, so, like, those three at the beginning, paddling for four hours. Got to use the the anchor. Anchor worked amazing, amazing. I had I only had one chain on there, and I was going like slow and steady. Two chains stopped. Welcome <laughs> it's like, to the show. It was absurd. So Paul's been telling me to get this drag anchor for a long, long time. And if you guys want to know what drag anchor is, go check out the anchor video I did on the YouTube channel, or go check out the fishing walkthrough. The week that this drops, actually, I'll be dropping uh, next week. So. A Monday of yep, yep, Monday yep. of this week that you're listening to this thing, it's on YouTube. Go watch it. Uh, but yeah, so we rigged that out. It works amazing. The only time I could see using three was like the time that the river, you know, destroyed my life and my soul and took it and ran away with it. Like extremely flooded, extremely high current. I could use two or three. And that's but, the that's the idea. Yeah, you you got variety, right? It works. And when you're in yeah, when you're in 30, 40 feet of water. Whatever you were doing in 10 feet of water that was holding you down is not going to hold you down anymore. So you definitely want to be that's you're at the perfect spot. It was a dope. The only problem I'm having with the way that I rigged this out and then made Paul consequently rig this out the same way is you can't change the chain on the water. You because have to walk behind you. You have to walk to the back of the boat. So we got to figure out a rig for that. Here's what I did. I took my assault paddle with the little you grabbed it. I turned around, I knelt on my H crate and just reached back and pulled it up. That's because all I'm gonna I do. needed to switch from two chains to one chain. It's not ideal in the river because you're moving, but if you can find a shallow spot, you can park it, you can do it. I'm not gonna get too far into it. <laughs> cool. Just saying, something I learned. But you know, the, cool. the drag anchor, life life changing. I got to fish, you know, square bills, meps, and spinner baits all the way down, no problem without ever really pedaling. Just stuck me to the middle as so I was just fan casting side to side. Uh, ended up sticking. <laughs> it was a horrible day. I, I don't know if it was the heat, the, the the temperature of the water, the color of the water. It did not rain this day, so you can tell your story in a minute. But I was like getting bites, but they weren't committing. It was like they were just swiping that back treble on my square bills. And I just, I stuck them, pulled them to the boat. They popped off like nine times. It was a very terrible day. I missed a real big one right at the end, like probably a two, two and a half pound smolly that I would have been, it would have made the trip right at the boat launch again. And I couldn't stick them. I didn't have it. So it's just all around like good start to a day. Terrible rest of day for me. So I, um, oh, first of all, some uh, news, which you will be able to decipher if you're watching this video very quickly. Ooh, welcome to the team, bro. Dude, so I, I'm on the mouse. I, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I have, I have joined the Monster Bass team. I'm not an ambassador, fancy guy like Jeff, but um, uh, I have joined He's the team, and so you will. You'll be seeing you'll be seeing more monster bass content from me than you have been. Um, and I'll be honest, one of the reasons that I did it because I do not I have not been a fan of boxes, but I've been getting the monster bass box after talking to Rick on the on this show. 
<laughs> if you're going to part with what you're going to part with to get a box, I'll be honest, it's still a value. And there is, I, it's hard to argue with what's in that box. So I, so I'm in, even if I wasn't on the team, I'd still be getting the box. Let me put it to you that way. That's the this, only reason that this is a thing to our listeners. This is huge. Uh, Paul originally he, like between the two of us, he had mystery tackle box way before I knew it was a thing. Way back. Uh, and canceled it way before I knew it was a thing, actually. So he had it for like what six months? No, it was no, it was a year. Year, year. Okay, so he, yeah, twelve months, man. Twelve months he hung on to this thing, and eventually he was just sick of getting the same bait, sample packs, and all that crap. We talked and, about this. What got me is that freaking. Oh, here's a Game Boy lure. It had like lights and stuff in it, and I was like, "See ya, dude. bye." Yes. Yes, that was the that's... last straw. I got a bunch. I just of crap. got that one last month. <laughs> I, I have the crankbait version. I still have it. It's never, it's never been used. I'm never gonna use it. It's a joke. Exactly. It just makes me. It was just infuri. It was infuriating that like they did not think that that would bother me. Maybe it's maybe I'm making too big of a deal out of this, and maybe it actually is a great lure, or whatever. I'm never gonna fish it. I got that. I was like, this is a, this is all a joke. I'm sorry, but this bothers me. If you love those, good for you. Yes, that is the one that I have, and it it's a uh, lipless. <sighs> this right here. So I just yeah. pulled it out of a vault. I keep it in a vault in my closet because it won't shut up. It just keeps. Let me see if it's still doing it. I I feel like I should be hearing. Can you hear? Sound. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, come on, do it. You were doing it. Wait. Oh God. I heard it. And it just, it honestly, it's just. And it doesn't stop. It's been doing it for. I've had this thing for a month. This is, this a, is this last is month's the, MTB. This is the everlasting birthday candle that has hooks on it, and it just. It I've, scatters fish. First of all, I fished it heavily for an entire day. I had this on a rod, and it just scatters fish. This is not a tracked fish. This thing is the dumbest lure I've ever seen. And everybody was like, oh, that brand's great. Like, you should give it a chance. I want to see if it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. It's a it piece just, of trash. It really, that was just the last straw. There are many things I didn't like. And it definitely wasn't worth the money. Like, I, I was looking at it as though, like, because I'm, part of my job is to get the most bang for my buck. And I am, I'm literally looking at this thing and I'm like, all right, this is like 30 or 40 bucks a month. And I could do way better at, at the time gander mountain without trying i could get way more things that i know that i will use that i will like and I, yeah r.i.p and i was and i could try other things all for cheaper than this this is a joke so yep. i stopped it and i was still against it up until a couple of months ago well more than that but and we're back Woo! and we're back and we're back and just seeing the amount of work that goes into it um i've actually been pretty impressed and seeing some of the folks that have been doing some of the testing so we Talk to JC. You get to see the like fisher men of the world who are out there, um, you know, trying out the baits and you know, Brandon and everyone else, right, uh, that are in your area. That's that's legit. I mean, those are legit fishermen who are who are fishing three, four times as much as I get to fish, um, who know their water, who know what's going to work in my area. So here we go. Now, hopefully, I can be one of those people. I'm going to post one of those videos that we talked about testing out some of those baits. So buckle up. We get to try them now. <laughs> so that was fun. that was the big one. The other one is, I went out, same conditions as Jeff, had a miserable day. I was on a lake that I have never fished before. Is huge thunder. Yeah, huge lightning right there. <laughs> um, the, Watch uh, the YouTube for the flashes. <laughs> yeah, you want to see flashes of lightning. Um, the uh, <laughs> I, can you can you feel the thunder through the is microphone? Good, I can feel it. It's, <laughs> It. So it's gonna um, be great. <laughs> so I went out, dude. It was, it was 95. It was sweltering. Oh. I got out at eight. Well, no, I got out at nine because I went to the river first because I wanted to fish the river. Oh yeah. Uh, way too low because I had to go out down and come back. If I was just going down, I would have just taken the, I would have taken the fins out of my boat and just dropped the anchor and coasted down, no problem. But it was just me for the day. So, um, pulled out, went to this lake. Uh, never been there before. Pretty big, pretty big lake actually. Maximum depth I think of 60 feet. So legit. I mean, it's a legit, legit lake. And um, God, I fished for like four hours, and it was. T- I was. I was ham. I was. I was actually hammering gills. 
on shallow cranks and top water and nothing else. If I had my three weight, I would not have done anything else. I would have done that all day. And it would be like a kid playing video games, but I didn't bring my fly rod. And so um, I really wanted to catch some bass in this lake because I know there's good bass in this lake. So, and I didn't, I don't have electronics yet in the boat because I'm still planning everything out, waiting for the battery. Thanks COVID, all that stuff. <laughs> and so I get out there and actually met a couple of dudes and I sold them on rabid baits while I was out there because I was using nice. them and they had not figured anything out yet. And I went out and I was like, have you guys seen rabid? Like they had a dude had a monster bass t-shirt on and I was like, Hey, nice. you seem cool. So I go over we're there chatting, and I'm like, do you remember the craw? And he's like, oh, well, I have some of the craw. I'm like, you don't have the shaking worm though. And I, dude, I threw out the shaking worm and, uh, um, and was, and was ripping and was started ripping lips. So, um, yeah. I hooked him up with a couple, but dude, the, the deal of the day was raindrops. I started getting rained on at like one o'clock the second. And I mean, I saw 10 raindrops. <laughs> I, I had, I had already had my, uh, Heaton head and I don't know how you pronounce it. I call it Heaton. The mini torpedo, yep. top water, threw it out, splash, two quick shakes. That thing just got not annihilated, sipped. Like, <laughs> and I was like, huh. Never felt a pull like this on this rod before. Thing is, just get it's the Abu Vengeance, and it is just getting bent in half. I was, like, <laughs> I was in a foot of water. I was in wow. one. I was in a foot of water doing the mini sh- 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 kicks on the <laughs> the shuffle. The yeah, shuffle the little pedal, shuffle man. that you have to do in <laughs> with the, the hobie. <laughs> the water with the hobie. So this thing's bending me over, and I see this thing shake its head, and I'm like, "Holy, a like, giant no way!" Twenty, twenty inches. Got a picture of it. Just huge fish. So I'll be posting that soon. Absolute monster. Could not keep him off after that. Could not keep them off. Probably pegged 15 fish after that. Then I switched over from top water once that died, uh, when the rain died, because it only rained for maybe half hour. That died. Uh, switched over to the rabbit on a net and was hammering rock bass, was hammering um, uh, largies, just in like a very rivery section that I did not know existed on this lake, was not on a map. Bunch of houses on it. We have to go there. Okay. Uh, super clear water, rock led rock ledges that drop down about six feet into yes. like heavy, heavy milfoil, and just Ned. I was literally letting this letting the Ned uh, roll down the the rocks yeah. and just getting blasted. Um, dude. The, the rabbit baits, dude. The rabbit looks honestly that craw when it falls down, like when it's rolling, it looks so tasty. You can't do anything heavy. It has to be one eighth or less on, on tungsten. Yeah. Like it's got to be smaller and oh, diameter it'll than rip the net. The rabbit baits. <laughs> too, well, this I didn't even set the hook. Yeah. I just oh, that's the idea. Up and I was drawing everything out. It was stupid. It was just cheek. I was getting catching enough fish where I was like I forgot to take pictures. Like it was, <laughs> it was good. So I actually had myself a day, uh, and it made up for it because the beginning of the day was tough, but. That was my day. Had the got the email from Monster Bass, which was pretty dang cool. Um, and then otherwise, planning a vacation as well to a lake that you have been to that's very large that we went to to ice fish earlier this year. <gasps> Ooh, you're gonna have fun on that. You that that lake like you can't even go wrong. I've literally just taken a spinning rod and reel, walked out until I was waist deep. We and have just, access. Threw out a buzz bait and just Wait. was like small mouth, small mouth, small mouth. But I was like, we what? Have, <laughs> we have access. That's the way to play, so man. So the hobie is coming. So it's gonna be that's Go. that'll be August. All right, so hit that, but hit the uh, there's a, a reservoir by there. And I'm that, gonna and I'm gonna troll. Uh yes, but also that that reservoir with the dam. Oh, I'll be. I got. I got plans. It's so good. I got plans. It's so. not. It's not on any like fishing charts, that one. I oh. just hit it and it was freaking so it was better than the big lake for me that week. And like the big lake was great. So that's saying something. So, so guess saying, what I'll be doing? Go there. Unweighted. Unweighted. Oh, yeah. Unweighted trick worms. Yes. Oh gosh. All right, cool. All right. So that was my week. <laughs> We're like all speaking in code. I you gotta move. I'm just getting so excited. So um <laughs> Show meat. 
we're talking terminal boxes. So Jeff and I use a, a, I will say it has become our kind of like standard organization tactic, which is in a kayak, you have limited amount of box, you have limited amount of space. So what I'm bringing is one, I've got one box that's got like the majority of like a mix of things that I think I'm going to need for that day. So it's got some crankbaits, it's got some top water, it's got X, Y, and Z that I think I'm going to need for that day. And I, I prepped that the night before. Then I've also got another box or I have a smaller bag that's got all of my plastics in it um, and some of the miscellaneous things that I think I'm going to need for the day. And then I've got another larger box that's got all of my terminal tackle. Just holding it up for folks who are watching YouTube. this on YouTube. It's a Plano Edge terminal tackle box. And when you hear the term terminal tackle box, it's the box that's specifically made to hold things that are at the terminal end of your line. That could be weights, like split shot, bullet weights, uh, you know, anything of that nature. That could be any kind of hook or jig that you can think of. That could be spin blades, uh, Nico. That could be leaders, pegs, swivels, beads, clackers, like all of that stuff that's not plastics or hard baits or body baits. Is that fair? That is super and typically, fair. And typically not bobbers. So that is like the definition they, of a terminal. They don't, bobbers don't fit in any of these boxes. Really. Yeah, not, not really. Maybe maybe the fills, like the... The little guys. The fit guys, ones. Yeah. but that's it. So then, how how Jeff, walk me through how a terminal box is different. Like, what makes a terminal box a terminal box? First of all, I already mentioned that it's made for hooks and weights and some of those other miscellaneous things, but like... What does that even mean? Like, how is that? Why would I not use a four-dollar Plano? For so, example? so let's first say that you can use a four-dollar Plano. 100%. I'm pointing. I'm pointing and thumbs up because <laughs> you definitely can. Your boy, uh, Mr. Mr. Paul over here, <laughs> threw his his weights box, his Cabela's waterproof box, into the water. Just flung it, flung it all willy-nilly. And then we went for like an hour. We hung out at that river spot. Yep. Like an hour. We did some filming. We did some other stuff. And then we came back and you found it. <laughs> and so that was, first of all, shout out for Lush. finding your stuff. Who who here has actually dropped stuff in the water and found it again? That's like 20% of the time, maybe less. Probably or 10%. better yet, someone else dropped it and you found it. <laughs> That's usually the best case scenario. <laughs> then you win brownie <laughs> points for life. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, you can stuff your terminal into any container you want. Here's, we're, we're going to get into really like some reasons why you would spend the money really upgrade to a terminal box. Uh, so a terminal box is different mostly because of the storage options that it affords you. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can kind of see this. We actually have on the Plano edge here, like some different compartments specifically sized for different things. Uh, you've got like the big old spots at the bottom, which are mainly made for hooks. As you move up, you get to the smaller, like finesse type stuff. You move up higher than that. You actually get to these special, like closed compartments, which are for your weights. So a terminal box is no matter the brand, if they're doing anything decent, because we're going to talk about a couple different brands. Mm -hmm. If they're doing anything decent, it's going to have a compartment that holds your weights so that they don't just bang, clang and bang into each other. Um, there are, Hey guys, by the way, <laughs> little, little, I'm going to do a little shout out here. I was, that was on purpose. There's a reason this episode is today. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, we haven't said this yet, but I'm gonna say it right now. I recently accepted a position as a pro staff member to woo tungsten. And I say woo, uh, woo tungsten, which is where I now officially get all of my tungsten weights and hooks and such. And we're going to talk about different types of terminal stuff that you could get from them. Uh, you know, the amazing company, something I've been following for a while. And also they've been saying like, Hey, Hey you, Hey you. And just like poking me <laughs> like, Hey guy. And I was like, fine, your stuff's great. Let's talk. Um, they actually have some amazing starter kits that I just ordered a bunch of. Going to do an unboxing on the YouTube. Stay tuned. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that. I just bought like way too much money's worth of tungsten today. <laughs> so much. Uh, so that, that'll drop on YouTube. Anyways. It makes my old man blood boil. <laughs> He's going to be so mad. So like if you guys have the, the straight boring 
boring box hashtag boring box coming 2022 uh if you have lead weights that are just banging into each other all that happens is they get a little a little dented you know not too much happens lead's a little softer so it dents right it gets marked up but it looks the same it doesn't matter almost at all tungsten though if you've got it painted is going to or if you have lead weights that are painted too i guess you can get that too exactly. they're gonna chip the paint's gonna chip right Nice thing about Wu Tungsten is you can get the chip free, no chip version of that, which is pretty legit. So you guys should definitely check out Wu Tungsten. Uh, and, you know, if, if you get that no chip, you don't have to worry about that. But since 99% of other weights do chip, especially on that paint, you're going to want a compartment that holds those weights. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking like Bass Mafia. It's like a nice foam section that you kind of tuck them into, tuck them, read them a bedtime story, whatever. And then, like I said, the uh, Plano Edge, where we have these compartments here that actually hold all the weights. They like it's got silicone in down. there. It presses them together so they don't move around at all. So you keep your weights clean. That can be important. Like, why would you have a painted weight if you're just gonna have a bunch of little shiny spots on it? Uh, I mean, it can still work. But it's it works fine. Clean. It's not yeah. as good. The other thing that's nice too is if you keep them in order, because a lot of people like the mm -hmm. the idea the idea behind a terminal tackle box. One of the biggest things organized. is that it's super organized, so everything is right where you want it to be. You know right where it is. You know when you're running out of something, and when you go to reach for something, you know right where it is. So if you've got like a plastic Clean-O box, which again I've used for years, is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's way cheaper, but one. You're not always going to know when you're running out of stuff. Two, if you have like one compartment, because you don't have as many compartments in a standard like a Plano or Flambo box or whatever, you've got limited compartments. These have a lot of tiny compartments, or in the case of bullet weights, they're they're literally all in rows, and you know exactly like okay, I've got two one eighths, I've got two one quarters, I got you know two whatevers, right? or three, or you know exactly how many you have, and they're all in order. And when they're pressed down and compartmentalized or they're stuck in the foam or whatever, they're right where you want them to be. They're not banging around a nest to each other, getting dented. They're they're going to be smooth the way you want them to be. They're going to fish how you want them to fish. They're going to be right where you want them to be versus being all in a pile and, and just not, not being organized. So if you're an or organization freak, which some people are, <laughs> I definitely am, it's, it, it's just a nice feature, right? Um. The other, the other, one of the main differences too is like the number of compartments is typically going to be a lot higher or compartment options is going to be a lot higher in a terminal tackle box because you're going to have a lot of different hooks in there. You might have the hooks that look identical, but have different size, slight different sizes or gauges of wire. And you're going to want to be able to like line them up. A lot of people like to label them. They actually, Plano actually, is it Plano? Somebody makes labels for their... Plano actually has labels on there. That's Plano know. right there. I'm showing yeah. on YouTube. So this this is actually real real quick, not to cut you off. <laughs> no, yeah, cut, go ahead. But to cut you off, shut up. Uh, but stop, is, <laughs> this is one of the weights boxes. You can actually remove them, uh, and there's a label on top. So you could actually just say like uh, far end, like quarter ounce, three eighths ounce, move it up to a half ounce, so on and so forth, and put several different like weight sizes in there, which is really cool. So yeah, so Plano puts the, uh, it, it's built in as dry erase or, yeah. you know, you can wipe off permanent marker with uh, alcohol. So I mean, whatever you can do that too. Uh, but yeah, you can mark it up on these automatically and then uh, everything else buy a uh, label printer. But yeah, super, like uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's like one of those. It's one of those things where, again, it's just it's it's like a hyper custom version of what it is that you're trying to do. So if you're trying to organize terminal tackle, you got a lot of stuff banging around. You got a lot of things you want to keep separate. It's thin you, too. Like it is a lot because you don't need the same amount of space. So yeah. the terminal box, well, well, some are thin. Some are thin. I want uh, to get into that. So the gigantic. <laughs> the Plano, the Plano Edge is thin. I just have a gripe about that. We'll get that. We'll get into that in a second. Ooh. I do. I have a grape. I have a lot of grapes. I'm a grape machine. He's but the uh, I am Man. a grape machine. <laughs> but the uh, I'm just very. Pissed. He's in his rocking chair and he's just like yeah. spitting into the spittoon. You know, he's he's <laughs> chewing that that yeah. red man. He's just yeah. spitting in his spittoon. He's like, you know what? Really couple grabs my gears. Couple terminal boxes are too skinny. <laughs> just wait. So the 
<laughs> so um, we need to do a corner, like the grape corner or something. The so grape corner. <laughs> the grape grind. I don't know. Anyways, I will. I will just say like they a lot of small, a lot more smaller compartments. Typically, they'll have mixed features, so foam, silicone, something of that nature that's going to allow you to hold your hooks specifically or hold your um, uh, your weight specifically. Um, and then usually they're actually, I will say, I think typically they're more customizable because oh, there's sure. more size options. I think terminal tackle box typically will be more customizable than your standard uh, box because again, it's a lot more small things and they're trying to make, yeah. they're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to like give you more options for those small things. Um, so the next question, I'm going to skip number three and we're going to come back to it. Who, okay. who, let's go through who makes some, some of the more popular options that are out there for terminal attack box. We talked about one play, no edge, Bass mafia. Well, there's a couple other ones. Cause I did my research. Oh, one, this guy doing research. One, well, one company that I actually really want to get on the show is Cal Coast. So they do, they make what's called the battle box. Um, it's a really neat box. I think it's pretty innovative. It actually does like very large things and very small things all in one. So, um, it's a little bit bigger, but it allows you to do a lot of customization in a much bigger format than what Plano oh. and Bass Mafia let you use. I've seen this one. So guess what, guys? Guess what, guys? I read the show notes, and I knew that Calcos was on there. And somebody had recommended that to me before on the channel. I think it was when I did, if you guys haven't seen it, guess what? There's a video for all the stuff that we talked about on this podcast. <laughs> uh, I did a box comparison, a tackle box buyer's guide, if you will. Uh, I think that's the title of it anyways. Um, but, yeah, you can check that out. And I was talking about my Bass Mafia, and somebody said Cal Coast. Somebody also said, guess what? There's a $15 version of Bass Mafia from H2O, which is the yeah. Academy Express version, which Academy exists in the South. They don't exist up here. I didn't know that was a thing. I Academy can is like Cabela's of, or more like Sportsman's Warehouse. Uh, Yeah, like for us up North, it's like, uh, what, Dunham's Sports Authority? Sure. Yes. Not Dick's, they're whatever anymore. Anyway, so... Yeah, so I mean, like I I heard about some of these, and that that though the H two O though you can buy online, and it is exactly a Bass Mafia, <laughs> which is absurd, and it's like fifteen or twenty bucks versus fifty versus fifty. Yeah, which is that's the other thing. Quick side note: terminal boxes because they are in any specialty box is always going to be more expensive. So for example, the Edge series, you get a cranking box. It's going to be more expensive. Bass Mafia, Cranking Coffin, more expensive. Uh, you know, any of uh, Plano, the regular, what's the Elite series? The Plano yeah. Elite has the Frog Box, which is perforated. It's got holes in it, so it lets the water out. Um, the Stick Bait Box, right? You've got all sorts of, uh, you know, for jerk baits and stuff like that. It's just long compartments. Spinner Bait. Spinner Bait Box is mint. If I you're have a big Spinner Bait there. guy, I don't, I don't hate it. I but wouldn't buy it. But I don't hate it. I can understand well, it. So the Plano Elite one's fine. <laughs> Crack them while they're cold. And that one's fine. But I now have a Flimbo. Flim, flimbo? <laughs> it's French. Anyways, uh, Ike likes it. Shut up. So the Flimbo, we have a spinner, like, box it's literally a box it's deeper they hang they dry i like it better um but anyways this is a terminal episode stop talking about spinner baits god fall. plano <laughs> edge bass mafia coffin the calcos battle box uh groove makes a couple i think they make some jig boxes and they have a tungsten vault they're like gripe i have a gripe with groove well and then rapala actually <laughs> actually has some utility boxes i don't think that they're truly a terminal box, but they actually would be a good option if you like old a bunch terminal. of smaller boxes. They are straight, so straight old man. Hey, you get you get your gripe with the groove out of the way, and then I want to do mine. You know what really grinds my gears? Go ahead. Magnets. <laughs> Magnetic closures to terminal boxes piss me off. Uh, the I just it's feel a good like idea. It's a it's good, a great idea. They tried. It's great. They tried. But the, the magnets are not strong enough. So here's my gripe with Groove, guys. I've had Groove boxes, and I did. The first unboxing on my channel was a Groove box. I bought it from MTB, uh, from Carl's Club or whatever, and uh, I hate it. I hate it. 
I don't like it. Um, first of all, it's small. They don't have a bigger one. So it holds only the small square bills, not even regular square bills, just small square like, bills. Like brats and like tiny. Yeah. yeah. The mini torpedoes, the tiny baby guys, right? So it's got all the tiny body baits that I got in there. And then even with that, they don't fit in there evenly. It's all held up by like silicone pieces. By the way, if you guys haven't uh, looked into Groove, go check them out and tell them that I'm mad. Uh, but the uh, it's like all silicone so that your hooks can get stuck, but you can pull them out easy, whatever. It, you know, it's it's fine. It's like self-healing silicone, um, which like I love my fly boxes that are silicone. I'll just say that, but I don't love these. And I have their boat launch pads too, uh, the jig and the crankbait ones not a fan uh, i took them out of my boat <laughs> so but yeah. the main issue with the boxes though guys is like they're super durable great hooks don't get hung up water channels out pretty good things the magnets are tiny and they don't hold shut and so this thing is open at all times like i just don't like it it just falls open and this is not just because they are probably next to the rapala probably the cheapest option yeah they're they just don't work the way you want them to work. I think that's, is that fair? Problematic. Problematic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, credit to, I've messaged them before to try to like talk to them about it, but they won't talk to me. So also that, but they're, they're. You just said you hated them. So. Well, I, I just now have publicly said that. <laughs> I didn't say that before I tried to message them. <laughs> uh, I wanted to be a part of this journey with them. But yeah, I just, I can't get behind it. You know, I like the concept. Great. Amazing. Amazing concept. Currently execution, I'm not happy with and I won't buy into. We'll just leave it at that. This is not a, a bashing groove episode. <laughs> Even though it's 10 minutes out of this. I will give you a shorter version of what I don't like about the Plano. I love the idea of the Edge. The Edge series is sweet. It is yeah. top notch. The it's priced right. It's been fantastic. Ho, super high quality. My the box, the standard Edge that I use to keep like crankbaits and stuff in. I, I do really like it. Mint. With the thinner. But wait. <laughs> but if you, if you catch me in a gripe corner, what I'm gonna gripe tell you. Corner. What I'm gonna tell you is when you try and close that thinner box because it's probably 20% thinner when you try and close the thinner box, the, uh, the terminal box, it, it's, it's actually pretty difficult to latch and it doesn't always, you'll get once the edge has like a long bar that you lift up. So it's only one piece instead of two, but only one side of it typically will latch and you really have to pay attention and latch both sides. Just going to do it for you on the video. Evenly latch, but I agree it doesn't always happen. You gotta, you have I to agree with really that branch. You have to be intentional. You have to keep pressure on both on both sides. If you try and close it on one side, you're gonna miss the other one. And I'm telling, dude, that is a that is a hundred dollar problem waiting to happen. If there's a lot of those compartments that are closed, which is great. Like there's mini compartments inside of the main box that if the thing flipped over, you'd have no problem half the box is open and like that is half your hooks spilling yeah. out everywhere and like on a it's kayak a dude if you got a pedal kayak with hole a hole in your boat that's just there you got a problem like you got a you have a hundred dollar problem <laughs> waiting to happen that is just not i i love that box i'm using that box right now and i'll continue to use that box uh -huh. it's just again it's a gripe that's it. You know, you know, you know who I think should solve this problem for us. Although we just talked about this today, Busby, can you make some more specific terminal? Uh, what do they, what do they call the additions like for the, the colony? The trays. Can you make some more like specific terminal trays? They're coming out with some stuff. I'm trying to get them on the show. Everybody, just so you know, I'm trying to get Every, them on everybody the show. Everybody, message if you're listening to this episode, please message Busby say you need to talk to the Burley fishing podcast because yeah. we we use the busby colony 28 we love it it's our current both of us it's our go-to day box right because it has the different compartment sizes you can throw spinner baits in it square box is legit 
The Dude, the square four, box is little... so awesome. So, so you can throw that. You got your long baits. You got plastics. You can throw every like I can carry everything I need mostly for the day in that. And then I carry my terminal box. So currently my setup is two boxes, terminal box that. But like, what if Busby? Because the latching system's better, <laughs> and they have some great, amazing ideas and a good product. What if they came out with a terminal box? I think it'd be phenomenal there. They'll say like, it is a terminal box, but I'm like, no, separate my weights. Yeah, please. it, it can work. It, they need a silicone lined tray. It's going to be more expensive. Just a you new need a tray. There's a couple. Yeah. They, they, if they gave I'd you some trays, separate. I would probably, if they may, if they had an option where you could just buy like a set of those trays, I would go buy one. I would honestly, Instantly. I would consider just buying a whole separate one. Just, you could keep a lot more in that box because it's deeper, mm-hmm. even if they didn't make like a thinner version. And and if they made the customization equivalent, right? I would I would consider buying a whole other box. Dude, I really like the Busby yeah. because as mu- it is more expensive. Just so everybody knows, it's more expensive by the like shipping, a lot. The shipping and taxes on it are a lot. They gotta the they gotta figure that out. You. There's a couple of things, but they're a new company, and yes. I have come to expect that from a new company because like they are not selling in every single retailer across the country. So they're not like subsidizing the cost of their box across 300,000 purchases a year. They're subsidizing across whoever the hell they can figure out sell it to. So like I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm fine being an early adopter and paying a little bit more money for a quality product. And when you hold the Busby box, love my Plano edge, not griping on the Plano edge. It is priced hella good and it works hella good. It's a great box. I, I use it. It's my backup box. That Buzzy box is rock freaking solid. And as much as I like the edge, I actually it's easier to know when the damn thing is closed with the Buzzy latches. Now, the bigger box, it's way easier, but I like the customization of the Buzzy better with the standard tray options they give you. Yeah. I can spit my. You can't put spinner baits in the box right now in Plano and the new and one they got edge, com- and any edge you can't except then for the they can't. do have the uh like the stand-up cranking coffins they have a spinner box but yeah it's, yeah, yeah. it's another 50 different. bucks <laughs> the, the yep. uh and they're coming out with a new version so holler to Plano they came out with a really cool design it's still not it's, as good as the Busby it is sweet it's, it's not as good as Busby it's not as custom hot take I'm just saying it it you is very good this, you sent me that this morning and I was like so excited because I have I, I have switched and this is the reason that my giveaway is all of my uh, the the uh, the the blue box like the waterproof 3600 planos is I used to have like 10 12 of those then I switched to all plano edge 3700s and I will never go back in my opinion I love my Busby though I love my Busby I only want one or two of them I think two of them probably ultimately but really I I would Busby if you did the terminal like inserts. Oh my God. I would have, I might switch just because of that, because they did it, but it's, yeah, it, it, it's phenomenal. The, the Plano edge I am like obsessed with though right now. So Busby's got to do something big to make that a change up. I'm surprised you said that though, because when you sent me that today, I was like, dude, game changer, Plano edge, terminal box or not terminal box. They have a terminal box. I meant the, uh, yeah. the Busby style. What do we call that? A modular, it's like yeah, a modular box. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. so imagine if you guys haven't checked out Busby, go check them out, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, and buy one, obviously, and tell them we sent you and get tell on. Tell them to go on that freaking show, man. <laughs> because we really want to talk to them. I want to hear like how they came up with it and all that. Yeah. But then Plano Plano Edge series now has a very similar. So look at a Busby, and I think Plano Edge has released pictures though, right? You showed me one today. They're totally so, different. So they have they have made they have found. They made magic lo- compartments, longer trays. They made trays that go the full distance vertically, not horizontally. So it gives you a lot more options. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, oh, it's unlimited. It's not you unlimited. Go, they you, just wider, made, though. you can put a spinner in there. You can fit a ton more stuff. It is super slick. I really like it. Don't get me wrong. But. <laughs> but and at first I was like, oh, it's done. Like Busby's got a problem. But then I was like really thinking about it and I watched some videos and I'm kind of thinking like, Ooh, yeah, that's definitely going to compete. But at the end of the day, if you're willing to pay a little bit more money for a, what I think is a more durable box, it feels more solid to me Yeah. When, when you're, when I'm holding that box, it's a more, it's a higher quality product. And 
just with the sta- I have not bought any fancy trays. I just have the standard trays that it comes with. Yep. That standard tray assortment lets me have my mini poppers. I fit like eight spinner baits pile oh, yeah. on top of each other yep. into that yep. square, and I can hold four to ten square bills slash crankbaits. I've got one tray for all of my shallow diving crankbaits. I've got a tray for the like the one long tray for all of my um, chatterbait type stuff. Chatter baits, Another yeah. one for jigs. I've got a whole one just for map spinners. Yep. It, it do yep. it's it's we a have like the same, we have the same for, setup <laughs> for a kayak box yeah. for a kayak specific box. So you got to jam everything you need for a day in one box. Hard to beat. Real hard to beat. Now, I'm not saying it's the end of the world. I just happen to really like it. I don't want to get into this whole thing because this has nothing to do with terminal boxes. Well, it does because you could it combo kind of does, that yeah. box. So if it you could. guys are looking for like one box to rule them all, it's probably the Busby. Uh, like in our honest opinion, I think we both agree on that because it has a few smaller compartments that you could throw yeah. your uh, sinkers, your your weights and your hooks and your you know whatever in. Uh, so you can do some terminal. But if we're speaking specifically terminal, I think – the best one right now on the market is going to be that Plano Edge. It is. Hands, That's why I have one. Hands down. And I had the Bass Mafia before, so I like, I'm like i speaking from that. Bass Mafia is the same as the H20 one, so I've already basically reviewed that. It's just cheaper. Uh, that Bass Mafia, gripe, gripe corner. <laughs> I walked into a buddy's house, and we were doing we were doing a little filming at the end of a trip, and I was carrying my Bass Mafia. And actually, we did a review of we this. We did that on review. The Yep. The I dropped the Bass Mafia and a Plano Edge box, and guess what opened? The Bass freaking Mafia. Both both latches popped up. It's only got two latches on the yeah. terminal box. Pla- they're plastic. All of the hooks. It, all and the, the irony, hooks. the irony of all the hooks going here, there's like three kids within like ten feet. Three little children at my buddy's house. I'm sorry, Marcus. <laughs> so. Those are your those are your options. I think your general options. I will say the Calcos is probably the one that takes up a space that no one else really makes. It's more of like a crate style. It is pretty sweet. The bass boat one. It is. It's it, it's, you got to have space. You got to have space. Yeah. You really. We're do. we're kayakers, guys. So if you're I in know. a bass boat, Calcos might be the play. I still think Terminal Edge or Terminal Edge, the Terminal Plano Edge box. Uh, but for a kayak, you want less space taken up. If I can have just two boxes with me. Take up the least amount of space possible, and we're we're speaking from the biggest boats you can basically get. Yeah. So we're just being weird. Uh, but yeah, if I had just two boxes and I was in my sit inside, which I also have, uh, I would take my Plano Edge terminal and my Busby, and I'd be set for the entire day. So this is this is really kind of setting you up to to figure out like if you've got like this this kind of leads into the next one. Why should you have one? Like why have a terminal box when you could have a, a plastic box we were talking a little bit about the difference between just like a standard kind of plain old plastic box like obviously the customization but the speed is another thing so uh, one of the big reasons that i think terminal boxes are a thing other than just like the obvious progression of like offering something more custom is if you're a co-angler on a boat so yeah. if you are a tournament fisher men fisher woman and you are out there and you're a co-angler you're only allowed to have a limited assortment you're only a limited amount of space in the boat. Mm-hmm. That 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 Angel pro boat. angler that pro angler is not gonna let you bring on two backpacks full of crap. So mm-hmm. if you're allowed to have two boxes, this is gonna be one of them because it's gonna answer all the questions that you need answered throughout the day when you go to reach for something. Um, if you're a bank fisherman, this is what I will say that that Cal Coast type box might actually work for you because you can jam into the bottom of a backpack with all your other stuff. But Yes. One box, right? I mean, you're you're talking about having I got I've got Back. limited amount of things that I want to carry with me, right? Or cart with me. I can have a little bit of everything I need in one box. Done. Dude. I'm not carrying a bunch of bags. I'm not carrying a bunch of crap. I flip this thing open and boom, I got it with me. Yeah. Oh yeah. You this slide that the into the laptop of... sleeve of a regular. Yeah, backpack. that's what I was gonna say. This is the Plano Edge terminal box is the size of a laptop. A so. Laptop. It, I, I carry like uh, I have a like a Yeti commuter or some Oakley backpack I got from work um, that I would do bank fishing with. The Yeti will hold. It's not as expandable, mind you, but it'll hold like yeah, super tough. It uh, would hold the uh, terminal box plus the Busby plus 
my uh, all the plastics I could ever want. And I, I think getting into what you're getting into here is like, why would you have it? Yeah, tournament situation, limited tackle situations, but also if you just want to catch fish, because I think at the end of the day, we can all agree terminal affords you the most options. Okay. You can switch colors on a dime. You can switch plastic sizes, types, action on a dime. The plastics are just extra little tiny bags that you can stuff anywhere because they're just plastics. It's not like trying to bring a bunch of other hard baits, body baits, swim baits, spinner baits, like that take up a ton of space or require an extra tackle box. So I think it affords you a lot more uh, options and varieties fit for any situation. Because I know if I bring my terminal box and then just my favorite other regular baits right in one box like the busby that i can just stuff 10 to 15 bags of plastics and if i know what body of water i'm fishing and like what the conditions are for that day uh check the weather paul's a nerd on that uh, and he got me to be a nerd on that and then check like the water near you if you know what body of water you're going to you generally know like if it's stained clear muddy chocolate milk whatever like you have an idea of what you're looking for so you can choose maybe a couple like brighter plastics, dark, stuff, dark right, plastics, yep. you know, depending on the situation, you just grab the right ones and go, you know, depending on the season too. But I think having a terminal box is a game changer. And if you guys don't have one, like I think that's the purpose of this episode is you should probably consider getting one uh, rather than just bringing a random bag of weights and hooks. Stuff well, we like talked, that. we talked about organization a little bit, right? And this is kind of, after doing kayak fishing, which again, limited size for a couple of years, it's kind of led me to two big boxes, a couple of plastics. My two big boxes are now divided half and half between terminal tackle, hooks and all that kind of stuff. And, and then body baits, hard baits, spinner baits, chatter baits, all that kind of stuff. That is enough to where I do a lot less preparation because I have a little bit of everything to do what I need to do no matter what's going on in that day. So um, it is easy, it's simple, it's fast, and that is an ideal scenario uh, for pretty much anybody. So that's kind of, that's just the evolution of some experience, mm -hmm. um, which obviously could help anybody. I, but I do think like kayak anglers, co-anglers in boats, bank fishermen, or anyone traveling, don't that is, those are great, great, great reasons to have a to terminal tack box. The so thing is, everyone? Pretty much, that's what I was going to say. It's like <laughs> pretty much everyone. Like there's the only other person, the only other person is someone who has enough space. So like your own boat or is, yeah. or is targeted enough to have so many hooks of like the same type or so many weights of the same type. Have they don't really box. have... Like if you're a yeah. saltwater fisherman and you're typically targeting the same four or five species in the same depth of water, yeah. you're going to have like 800 octopus hooks or what the hell ever. I don't know. <laughs> you're not going to need, you're not going to need this. Right. Yeah. But bass anglers, uh, definitely. I think walleye guys, this, I think this is like, if I was a walleye dude, you one terminal box and you've got every single jig head that you could imagine ready to rock all organized, ready to go, ready to look at in shades, colors, sizes, weights, all organized. It just, it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. So it's something you should think about. That leads me to what are you going to, what, so name of the game is I've got top five things you absolutely have to, you, you have to have in your box. This is targeting bass people. Top five things you absolutely have to have. And then another couple of things you really should have in your box. So it's like if you bought one yeah. and you're going to pack it. it for the first time, what are the first five things that you absolutely have to have in there? And then the back half of it is, all right, next time I go to wherever I go to buy my tackle, what am I going to get to finish it out? My number one, hands down, especially for bass, EWG. I can get behind that. And then I'm going to say my Ned Hooks. Going that was there. my number. That was my number two. Is is Ned heads. That gives yep. you. So EWGs let you do a lot of different things. You can Everything. do a lot of flipping. You can do mm -hmm. swim baits if you're adding a weight in front of it. Uh, so you can even get away with smaller EWGs in a pinch. You can use those for wacky rig or anything else. I mean, yep. not ideal. 
but you can do it. So like that's why it's my number one. It, it's just such a flexible thing because mm-hmm. it works for swim baits and it also works for stick baits. It even works for trick worms. Again, it's not ideal, but you can get it done. The Ned, it is a go-to. It yeah. again is really flexible. It doesn't have to just be finesse. If you got big boys, you can work it like a jig head. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. It is really flexible. All year ne- too. Oh yeah. 100%. You can jig with it. I mean, you can do a lot of different things with it. My next one, bullet weights. Yep. Couple of different sizes. Uh, one eight to one ounce. One quarter. One eight, one quarter is probably enough for most scenarios. Maybe half yeah. ounce if you deeper water. But bullet weights is a must have. Flipping, pitching, dragging, Texas, Carolina. Uh, there's so many. If you, you can tie three of them. At the bottom of your line together, I've done this a ton of times, and you can and you can use that as your weight for your finesse stuff, yeah. uh, or or drop shot. You can do a lot of stuff like it's so flexible. So again, some if if you can only have five things, that's got to be your number three. So my number four, we'll see if we're close, would be like a a multi-use small hook. So I'm thinking like a a wide gap finesse hook that I could use for drop shotting or wacky rigging or Nico rigging. Exactly. So an octopus hook, yep. smaller size, probably the way you want to go. My The flip side of that would be potentially, the other thing I would say, you got to have pegs. Is that your fifth item? That's my fourth item. Okay. The okay. alternative to what? Pegs is fair. Well, because then your bullet weights are useless. Not useless, but it makes Not such useless. a it makes a big difference. It does make a difference, but it's also more like a plastic slow fall because what we're talking about, guys, is like the peg holds the weight to the hook, right? Okay. So if you're pulling through like heavy grass cover or whatever, you usually want to throw a peg on that so that your weight's not separating and causing problems and getting wrapped around stuff. But for I would say like lake conditions and even some river conditions, like throwing without the peg, like that weight's going to fall first. If you're throwing like fluoro mono, especially the weight's going to fall first and then the line's going to come out to the hook. And then that plastic's actually going to fall a little bit slower, which can not a bad thing. A lot of bites. Yeah. That's not a bad I thing. Do. I do it a lot of times. I say the, pegs, the, pegs are the, up in the air. <laughs> the pegs can control too. They do. A lot of people only use them for flipping setups. I use them on the opposite side for Carolina rigs. I use yeah. them on the opposite side of the weight for a ton of my finesse setups. Yeah. I use them for a lot of different things. So up in the air. The one thing that I don't think is up in the air, swim jigs. Ball uh, head jigs. I, it just gives you so much flexibility. But any, I'll either call any kind of weighted jig hook. Oh, can we categorize that? Because I was going to say like either shaky heads or tube jigs. Would be I'll my say, next go. Yep, I'll say any kind of weighted front hook that you fish the most. So if it's shaky okay. heads, it's shaky heads. But I I think that swim baits with the the list that we have, yeah, by far the most impactful because it gives you something moving to go to, right? So if if all the still stuff's not working, if the if the flipping's not working, if yeah. the you know whatever. Yes, you can do a bullet weight with a hook and get some and a peg and get some kind of motion. Like it'll work. Ball head jig, dude. You can jig with it. Like you can't yeah. do anything else. Um, so I would say just some kind of weight forward hook, right? Whether it's almost, it or whatever. I would almost say a belly weight hook then. I had that in there, but I do think that the like uh, to me, just again in I grew up river fishing. When I see a ball head jig, I see something that's super flexible because yeah. you can rig it weedless. If you in a pinch, you can. Well, we got Neds. You can. That's fair. See, that's I, fair. I would say, all right. So if we're if we're going this route, I'll say we have Neds. That covers that spectrum, and then we would say I I would say belly weight because you can yeah. uh, swim a worm. Guess what, guys? I I learned how to swim a worm. Uh, if you watched my unboxing like two months ago, your homeboy. Didn't figure out the Buddha baits. I was about to say your Buddha bait. Dude, I I got hate hate for the Buddha baits uh, because I didn't know to pop that little tail so it's more of a speed worm, right? This guy never fished speed worm. Now I know. But if you have a belly weighted hook, you can you can swim a worm. You got 
any any Lizard. paddle tail, whatever. You can throw lizards on there. You can throw grubs on there. You can throw whatever. So I think a belly weight covers more of that weedless spectrum. Sure. You can even get ones that at that point, if you're just mixing belly weights, you've got uh, the underspins. Yep. Throw the underspin if you need a little flash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some kind of weighted hook, bullet weights, Ned, EWG. Uh, I say peg, but that's that's your the, main. That's like the core, event. the core yeah. of what's gonna be. You got room for in your box. You got room for 10x that. I got. Uh, oh yeah. Treble hooks, drop shot weights, Nico weights, uh, but, spinners, uh, shaky heads, flipping hooks, uh, jigs, all the huge butt. swivels, beads, everything. <laughs> huge butt. If you know the way that you fish, the nice thing about a terminal tackle box is it lets you, like if you're, like like I was saying earlier, if you're super targeted to like walleye, or if mm-hmm. you're a flip, if you're a dude who just like you, if you're grabbing a hook, it's a flipping hook or an offset. One out, two out. You can have one out, two out, three out gauges A, B, C, and D. You can have if you're a bullet weight dude, you can have every single type in lead. You can have every single color in lead. You can have every single type of tungsten, every single color in tungsten. If you're if you are a finesse guy, I almost think if you're if you like to finesse fish, you abs like a a terminal tackle box would change the way that you grab tackle because yeah your top two rows all Ned. Your next two rows, all Nico. Your next two are are, are all your drop shot. It's yep. it's a game changer. Yeah. Um. So with that, what are some of the things? Like, what is the list of stuff that you probably should have in your box? We can start with hooks. I think that after my list of stuff that we talked about, the the next thing that I put in there, offset worm hooks. Yeah, offset, I, I would 100% agree with that. Um, other thing I would say is like my shaky heads, tube jigs. Yep. Something absolutely. like that. Just different weighted hooks. I had the, my next was the weighted swim bait, which we talked about. Here's mm-hmm. a here's a curveball, extra treble hooks. Did I just say that? I have those in there. Yeah, 100%. It's, treble it's hooks, a- if you guys don't carry extra trebles, I have missed so many dang fish because your treble is bent rusted just too, too big. small or too big yeah it was uh, exactly so too small is another one like they'll just miss it when they swipe at it miss it big one too big littler fish you're not getting them because they can't get it in their mouth or you know it's, or it's just not the it, i like a i like a i like a bigger hook in the belly and a smaller one on the tail personally yeah i mean That's, gen, generally they're hitting the tail uh so I, yeah, I agree. Um, with that said, you know, you got to have like split ring pliers would be ideal. So we're, we're talking like for top waters, crankbaits, whatever you can switch it on the fly. Um, but even for like MEPS, cause you can get, uh, like VMC notably sells these other people sell these. You can get like the skirted, uh, treble, uh, with a little flash on it. Yeah. Well, you can tie your own, you can tie your own as Paul is supposed to do and post on Instagram eventually here. Uh, <laughs> but if you have that, like MEPS for me, like I love a MEPS, but a MEPS is dead. Not when the blade is dead, not when even the wire bends, because you can bend it straight. But when that treble dies, then you're like, what, you throw away the MEPS? I got like six hanging right here that are just rusted out. They just need a new treble. Yep. Tie your own, order a different one, buy a different one, whatever. Uh, switching out trebles on the fly very important um it, it, something most people overlook i keep two sizes i keep just um big ones for crankbait size and then i keep smaller ones for uh all my panfish size stuff yeah they're all just straight replacements none of them it's never probably never going to be perfect but it's always going to work so i keep yeah. I, that just and that just keeps one one space in my box is, mm-hmm. is is dedicated to that and i just keep like four or five of each um Next thing would be, oh, and weedless jigs, something we haven't talked about. There are times where I've been like, son of a, mm, I just wish yeah. I had a one weedless, skirtless jig. Like, just yeah. I just need one. For that day, I keep, no, four. I keep four, four. in there, two different nice. sizes. They're just two different sizes, just in case. It has happened before. I've been on lakes where I've been like, God, I just wish I had this. So that's another thing you can think about. Um, the next thing would be weights. The first thing I would say, finesse, 
drop shot weights. Yeah. yeah. Then the next would be your Nico pegs. Um, yeah. The next would be split shot, probably, in at least two sizes. And if I'm only stuck to two, I would go one on the heavy side and one on the super light side. And then you just mix and match to get the size you want, like the weight that you want. So like one big one, two small ones, three small ones, one big one, like whatever. Yeah. Um, it lets you mess around and do what you need to do. I would throw a little, a little, a little tangent in here. Spinnerbait trailer hooks. Just going to throw it out there. Spinnerbait trailer hooks have saved me more times than not. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you guys fish spinnerbaits, you know, it comes with like a singular hook with a wire bend and then you got the blades hanging off the back. Right. Um, I've had too many times the fish swipe at that singular hook and miss it. And I think it's like the positioning of the blade. Like it's just the hook isn't far enough back. So you throw a trailer hook on there. I like, I will always catch fish on the trailer hook. It's not often that they get both. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that it, it, it salvages a lot of catches that you would otherwise miss. So it's one that I actually have a compartment for with the, uh, I don't even know what to call it. You know what I'm talking about? Like the little plastic tubing that you just cut a piece the little, off. That's the little rubber grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you shove it over yep. the eye and then you stab it onto the original hook from the spinnerbait so that it mm -hmm. hangs tight. Dude, clutch. That's that's actually one of my like preserved spots in the terminal box for me. Absolutely. I love fish and spinnerbaits, you know? The other tip I would give you is you can cut the skirt. And a lot of times we get short struck. Okay. You can cut the skirt off entirely, and that might save your day. I know at least on buzz baits, yeah, I have completely cut the skirt off got multiple buzz baits and gotten a W. If you Pro don't tip. keep that, in, if you don't keep that in your box. Pro tip. <laughs> um, any other weights? Uh, not that I have really like Nico weights. We said, right. So we got split, that, uh, finesse and then your split shot. So oh. like drop by finesse. I mean like drop shot stuff. Yeah. That's all I carry. So then it's a lot miscellaneous misc little blades that you can screw into your soft plastics. Yep. The, the Nico, um, little rubber bands. Uh, I've got swivels barrel swivels and then steel leaders are a couple of things a couple of the options that i would say you could keep in there and clips i guess clips i don't really use them I'm i don't either think, snap I, swivels I like, you're talking about snap swivels? yeah like yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I i i keep those in my bag for when i'm at the cottage because i'll do a lot of changing out of pre-rigged stuff that's another thing is anything pre-rigged that you have so like pre-rigged carolinas like pre-rigged texas like any of the, if you use the same rig over and over and over again, pre-rigged version of that, you tie your own, you wrap them up, you drop them in there. Another pro tip, if you're using a terminal tackle box or stuff that you don't use very often to keep it organized, but in the same compartment, you can use rubber bands and like very small rubber bands and like six hooks like all together. That way, instead of doing like, here's my one out, two out, three out, four out or five or whatever you carry, you can and jamming them in separate compartments. You can jam them all into one, and but then they're all not. They're all like separate. And that's for stuff that you don't use very often. I would not recommend yeah. doing that for like stuff that you grab every day. But like to jet, like what Jeff was talking about. If you keep two or three different sizes of like trailer hook, if you keep two or three different sizes of trebles, if you keep you know whatever it is, if it's something you don't use very often, but you want to have a couple different kinds, that allows you to jam three or four things, especially hooks into like one or two compartments without having them all just be like a jumble and you never find them again. So that's, I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a good encapsulation of what should be in your, in your terminal tackle box. Obviously there's a, a whole host of unlimited things, scissors, pliers, like tools, uh, glue, they don't fit. super glue. Well, they do. Su if you have a Busby super Dude, glue, super glue, you guys time out, hang on. Super glue <laughs> is a freaking game changer. If you got stuff i was about to say other stuff. words stuff i was like yeah, it's a mix between stuff and another word but if you got stuff that's breaking super glue is a gosh dang game changer but for ned rigging specifically or even i, I guess shaky heads you know jigs and all sorts of stuff right if you if your plastic sliding off if it's breaking off it's moving off position it looks stupid little dab 
A little dab will do ya. A little dab of super glue, game changer. I always have it on. And specifically, I like the Loctite super glue. I don't know why. I've used a few different types. I like the Loctite. Most Gorilla Glue also needs, uh, not <laughs> Gorilla Glue. Most types of super glue <laughs> typically need some sort of moisture to start it. And if you have it to be by a lake, that would be a solid place to have it. Huh. Full of moisture. <laughs> yeah. The um, essence of wetness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just have to say it. It's Zoolander. So I'm going to just say it because I need to say it because it's like a thing I have. But um, <laughs> I think that's it. Like that's the, the, the thing is, is like, you may not need a tackle box, or you may not need a terminal terminal box because of how you store your tackle. If you have a traditional tackle box, you've got trays and trays and trays of places to keep all your stuff. Probably not a huge deal if you're if you're lugging around one of those. If you're lugging around a backpack, I promise you it probably will help you, but you don't really need it. If you're in a boat, you probably don't need it. I'm not saying it won't help you. You want it. But you probably don't need it. It is more expensive. This is more money. This is also fishing. It's pretty much an endeavor of setting your money on fire it's something you should think about it is something that i will say especially being a kayak angler man i it is a little bit of a game changer because it just it puts everything to hand very very quickly it's very clean it's very organized it's very it doesn't sound simple because we've just talked about for an hour but it actually is very simple it puts all the all the things that you're looking for at your fingertips at a glance um and what the plano edge is 40, 50, 40? That'd be 50. 50. Sure. <laughs> 50 bucks. They're all generally um, 50 unless you get between... the H2O box. It's the only yeah. cheap one. But if you've got the means or you or you have the desire, it is a way for you to, to significantly trim down um, what it is that you're carrying and, and kind of customize it to exactly the type of fishing that you're fishing for. So it is an option for you. Um, and again, it, it it's just it's just cutting it's just cutting down on the noise of, of things you're dealing with on the water, which is some of what we talk about. So something to think about. Definitely something that's out there. Um, and then hopefully we're getting some more options coming soon. Wink, looking at you, Busby. <laughs> wink, wink. Hop on the podcast uh, next this week. <laughs> yeah, and if you're and if you're listening, seriously, legit, message them and be like, I was listening to the Burley Fishing Podcast. They wanted to talk to you. I know they've reached out to you. You should talk to them. We want to hear from you. Call them. Specifically on that podcast. Call Seriously, them on their stuff think, right now. Yeah, that'd be, that would be, uh, honestly, that'd be a game changer. Do it. Dude, it, it, if they just came out with some like terminal specific compartments, <laughs> that would be so legit. I would, it would. It, there's no need for anything else. Like you can do so much with those. I love them. Yeah. The new Plano Edge edition that's coming out though i mean we're gonna have to get that too and i think we're gonna have we're to get a couple gonna have to go head to head uh so we'll definitely do some comparisons in the future that'll be an on the water bro <laughs> dude absolutely uh any more questions for today any more topics to cover well, that's that's the big stuff um thanks for listening everybody awesome appreciate you guys listening thanks for tuning in tune in again every week we drop these episodes uh friday at 5 p.m. <laughs> on both all the podcast networks that ever existed anywhere ever and players all of them i'm on uh and also on the youtube channel of course so subscribe to the burly fishing podcast drop us a five-star review if you guys like the content please it helps uh as well as drop us a comment let us know didn't we have a shout out for this week we had an unbelievable comment left on uh i think it was itunes I'm going to pull it up right now. You, Just so everybody you, knows, we look talk. at all of these. Anyone that has reached out to me on Instagram, we respond to because it means a lot. You know, we talk about people who have reached out to us, whether it's companies or, or individuals. Um, it does mean a lot to us. I, this may seem like if you're listening to this, like, oh, like they have like thousands and thousands of people that reach out on a daily basis. It does not happen on a daily basis. It means a lot to us. And it, it turns into, honestly... It turns into like, I don't want to say it's like validation for what we do, but it it honestly, it feels really good to know that you're having a positive impact um, with somebody or if you're having a negative impact, knowing something you can do different so that you can do better. So I honestly, every email, every comment, if you follow me on Instagram, I will favorite every single thing that you post. I, I really do. We, we, we appreciate it so much. And I think this is a great example of it. Yeah, th this is amazing, guys. Like it, it, I, I have a lot of guys 
maybe kids <laughs> like messaging me saying like, how do I fish? And like, I love that. I love that. Don't ever be afraid to message us. Like uh, somebody messaged me yesterday. Like, what are some summer tips? Okay, cool. Here's what I'm doing right now. Try that. Like, I love that. It's so fulfilling for us. But this, this review feature review of the episode, maybe we should just do this from now on. If you guys drop a review, we're going to shout you out. How about that from now on? Uh, but this one is from snipe a Raven. Hey, also, before I even read this, Sniper Raven, if you're listening, I hope you are because you said you love the podcast. Hashtag, that's your title. Uh, <laughs> send us an email, info at burlyfishing.com. Let me know where I can ship you some merch because I'm going to send you some stuff, okay? So if you want a t-shirt, you want a sticker, you want a hat, I got some extra that I just ordered, so I'll send you some, all right? Um, but anyway, so Sniper Raven says, you guys probably won't read this. <laughs> Here I am reading it on the air, uh, but just wanted to say, I love you guys. Keep it up. And I'm from Jackson, Michigan. Shout out. Nitton Shout Bros. out. Uh, and you guys are the reason I started kayak fishing more and influenced me to start an outdoor channel. So this guy's starting his own channel uh, with my daughter family stuff. That's awesome. Uh, being outdoors and fishing and hunting has helped me with my PTSD. And this got me, this got me going, right? Um, more than anything, thanks again, guys. Can't wait to see what the future brings for you guys. So I really, from the bottom of my heart and Paul's as well, uh, we appreciate it. Sniper Raven, you're friggin' awesome. Again, send me an email. Tell me it's you. If you guys are listening, don't don't anybody else like jump in on this. Sniper Raven, this is for you, man. I want to send you some merch, so let us know. Really appreciate it. It's so awesome to hear stuff like that, you guys. So don't be afraid to uh, send us a message, send us an email, drop us a review, please. It helps a lot. We do read every single one, so definitely do this. And, uh, uh, of course, you guys can follow us on uh, Instagram, at Burley Fishing. Paul is at under uh, – Paul, at Paul <laughs> – at underscore immediately underscore. <laughs> what if you're just like at underscore or underscore <laughs> on Instagram? <laughs> Does anybody have that? Dude, take that. I um, need to go check. Dude, so it's at, at Paul underscore J underscore glass and tell him to shorten his name. And uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Burley Fishing, and then the YouTube channel, Burley Fishing. We love you guys and we will see you out on the water.